Anna, yeah. we're now on the YouTubes, so you can come. Yeah. Through. Yeah. Look at us. Yeah. Yeah. A little Marshall Tucker there at the top of the show. I don't. I don't know what brought that on, but um, love that song. Love the Marshall Tucker band. So just figure. That's a smooth. That's a smooth jam. Is what that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not. Does this sound fuzzy when I talk to you? No. Sounds fuzzy to you. Well, I guess it's clearing up now. No, you're good. Sometimes the internet likes to give us a little trouble. No, you, you sound good. Benny, what's going on over there? How is your holiday season? Do you feel festive at all? I don't feel no. very festive. No, no, there's no festivities going on because. Why is that? Well, for me, I'm in the middle of, of pushing this movie. I mean, just now, mm. right before we came on, I recorded with Dr. Drew. Right. Yesterday, I recorded with Corolla. And then I'm doing, yeah, yes, I did Steve Owens' podcast, which I know right. you've been on also, Fascination Street. Yep. And on and on and on. So in between doing my shows and trying to build up a few shows to make it through the holidays. Yeah. You know, I'm just, I'm just going crazy over here. I, I don't leave this room. And <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not making that up. Um, I, I know. I, I'm in here. I just, before Dr. Drew, I looked around and went, okay, I won't have time to, so I just got on my bike for two hours. You know, it's the only time today for myself. And I didn't leave this room. I just got on that bike sitting right next to me for two hours, watched a little television. That's the first time I've done anything like that in a few days. Be Last night, I did not walk out of this room until around midnight. Midnight. Yeah. I believe it. It's 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 non freaking stop. I want to ask you this. So I did my Vinny 10 pound weightlifting routine this morning. OK, I got up at five and did my work until about eight. Right. And then I was like, I'm going to do the weightlifting before the work emails start really rolling in. Right. Uh, okay. But here's what I did. I did a round of all the things and then I had to unpack from New York. So I went and like folded clothes. And then I came back and did another set of the things. And then I had to go clean that thing. And this is the only way I can get things done because my mind is racing. If I were to do just stand there and do all my weights at once, I would be stressing that I needed to get other things done. So for my own mental health, I would do a whole round of sets, go get something else done, do a whole round of sets because or else I would go choose to do the housework over the workout and I need to do the workout. And this way I got them both done. Oh, I've cut out, you, you know, know what I'm saying? yeah, no, I, I get it. And I've cut out skeet shooting. I haven't done that in, in a couple of weeks now. I, I can't even do the one thing I enjoy doing. You know, I, I'm not doing I'm, I'm I'm exercising out of the need to stay in shape and, right. and, and have some sanity in my life. But I walk into this into my office now and I don't leave. There are whole days when I don't get in my car and go in like I don't leave the house. You know, and oh, <laughs> I believe it. I don't go out. It's like I will walk outside and, and go play fetch with my dog sometimes for 15 minutes just to be outside. Yeah, because I'm in, I'm in fresh mode. air. You're, yeah, you're sitting in, in your own stink. Yeah, I'm, I'm in I'm in work mode here, man. It's like the end of the year. Most people are winding down. Mm -mm. Half the country doesn't seem to want to go to work or whatever. And, and you got to promote this movie. And all I'm doing is everything I can to promote this movie because it's important for me, for people to see this, you know, um, for one reason, you know, uh, I spent a shit ton of time making it right. And uh, there's yeah. a lot of money that goes into it. There's more than money. There's the time, the effort that goes into it. Right. right. And then, you know, you put something together. I've never heard people off the air like Dr. Drew spent five minutes before we went on. He goes, this is your best work. And I was like, well, mm. thanks, Drew. And I agree. I said, by the way, Drew, can you say that again when when the, mic yeah, when the mics are rolling? Maybe, maybe for that. He's like, no, I don't think you understand. This is, you know, critically, this is just amazing what you've done here. And, you know, I'm like, well, thank you. Thank you again. Mention that when the mics come on. And he just went on and on. And I finally yelled, Gary, turn the fucking mics on over there so that we could capture some of what Drew is talking about here. People are responding to Beyond Impossible like I've never seen before. It's so good, Vinny. 
I, I'm I'm shocked. You I just, still don't you still don't believe it because when I was telling you two weeks ago, you were kind of in disbelief. Yeah, I am. I'm still in disbelief because I'm too close to it. You know, it's it's my baby, right? So it doesn't. I can't see what you guys see, right? Right, just like the Marshall Tucker song, "Can't You See?" Can't you see? No, I can't see. I can't see it. I I. I want to see it, but I can't. Well, I I did something really subversive with your movie. Oh boy, what did you do? No, so no. one of my one of my favorite engineers that I work with in the voiceover world uh, called me up for we were doing a work session. Skeeter, um, but go on. No, it wasn't Skeeter. <laughs> I can't say. I don't want to say who it is because right, he's on. well known in his industry. All right. And. A while back, he had a stroke a couple of years ago. And his doctor told him to make sure to cut out all the meats oh, and boy. animal products. And I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to say what I think, because who gives a shit what I think? As long as he feels better. And so since we talk a lot and I love him. I love him so much, but we talk a lot. I'm always hearing about what he's eating. And I'm like, and I finally now just say like, you and I literally eat the opposite because he eats things like bean burritos and I eat things like steak. Right. And he's going to make his breakfast. It's, you know, uh, vegan, this and whatever cereal burrito and that. Yeah. Bean burritos. And I'm, and I'm going to make my breakfast and his eggs and bacon. And so he said, he's like, oh, I made this really. And of course, he loves to talk about cooking. And who are you going to talk about cooking with? But your friend who has the cookbooks, right? Right. And so he says, uh, I made a thing. And it, he was describing it. Uh, he's a bachelor. So he's like, I made, I got the trade, the frozen, <laughs> the frozen quinoa from Trader Joe's. And I'm only laughing. I'm not laughing at him. I'm laughing at the fact that we've spent 10 years saying fuck quinoa. So I literally feel like it's the universe playing a prank on me. Yeah, yeah. And, and and so and, and by the way, this is what you talk about when you say people's good intentions have been stolen. Quinoa stole good intentions. Let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, they, they lied to people for years. Going, oh, it's you know, it's got all the protein of meat. Literally, that's what they used to say about it's got the protein. It's got the fiber. It's got the iron. It's got the B Everything vitamins, like, Vinny. Just eat that. I remember vegans telling me you could just eat that and nothing else and be healthy. It's like, are you and it's lies. kidding me? It's, it's just wrong. It's missing uh, some key nutrients. So he says, I got the, the frozen quinoa from Trader Joe's, you know, with the vegetables in it. And I was like, uh-huh. I don't know. I don't, I don't buy that. Um, and also too, by the way, the relief that I personally felt 10 years ago when you said fuck quinoa and I was like, I mean, I don't have to eat that shit anymore. And you're like, no, that's off the table. In fact, yes. I was so happy. <laughs> and beans too. That was another one. And I do have a few bean recipes because there are some vegetarians who come to this work. And so I do have some bean and lentil recipes out there, right. but I, I don't care for them. So I was really relieved when you said, no, you don't have to eat beans. Oh, thank God. Everyone said you have to eat beans or else you're not healthy. And I'm like, I eat beans and it's disaster. <laughs> Why? This doesn't feel like it's healthy. Anyway. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm with you on the bean thing. Like if I had a, a bean burrito, People, oh, it's got protein and whole thing. I would get it as inflamed and feel as bad as if I ate chocolate cake. I'm not. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Me too. It's very rough on my digestive system. And by the way, say. that's me. And everyone does it. Not everybody has that reaction. By the way, some no, people I can tolerate it. it. I get it. Um, and that's me buying real beans, not like right. some mixed. Not like Taco Bell refried bean. Right. This freedom. is. You know, I I would feel the same. You know, because I'm just not in tune with that crap anymore. So. Well, so my friend says I got the frozen quinoa with the vegetables in it from Trader Joe's and heat it up. He goes, that stuff is really good. I was like, oh, OK, I'll have to take your word for it. And uh, I put two impossible burgers on there <laughs> and I literally was like, did Vinny put you up to this? It, yeah, you felt I like swear people hard. put people up to this just to see what my reaction is going to be. But he doesn't know because I am not going to sit in a work situation and spout off stuff. You know what I mean? You don't do that. So I was like, oh, that's great. I'm glad it was so good. You know what? You should check out my friend's uh, movie that's coming out. It's called Beyond Impossible. It's 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 a little. Did you really a little, tell that? Did you? Yes. Yeah. I said you should check it out. It's a little it's going to be a little different. It's going to be a little different um, than You're maybe what. Very confused. <laughs> but I did say it and he's like, cool, you know, and he will because he's, you know, 
he's my friend and he will. And he doesn't listen to this podcast, obviously, or else I would never I would never bring. No, 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 it's no, not no. about making fun of him. I'm not making fun of him. Oh, no, I'm no, making no, fun no. of the fact that the people come at me with stuff and I'm like, oh, wow, the things I know, but I don't want to be Miss Bossy Pants right now. I have to really walk right. a line. This is a work right. environment. You know, uh, uh, Steve Owen asked me a very uh, interesting question when he was, I was actually paying attention for a moment while someone was actually interviewing me. <laughs> and, Good for you. Yeah, well, look, I was really, look, sometimes you're just going through these interviews and, and you're gone. But Steve is one of those guys that, you know, you know, so you really want to pay attention. And, you know, he watched every piece of the movie. Drew did the same thing. I thought Drew was going to just bring up one point or two points you could tell he watched it beginning to end because he was asking very, very specific questions. Um, but anyway, Steve said, who did you do, do this movie? Who, who did you make this movie for? I guess is what. That's a really good question. What did you yeah. say? And I said, first off, that's the douchiest thing I've ever, it's like when you write a book. I don't think that's douchey. People always go, who are you writing this for? And I started thinking about it and it was a very legitimate question. It's like, you know what? I'm, I didn't write this to, I didn't, when I say write it because I write out these movies, folks. So for me, whether I'm sitting on my front porch telling the neighborhood kids a story about Cajun land or writing a book or doing a podcast or a movie, I'm just a storyteller. So, right. you know, I'm just a writer. And um, I said, this movie is not to try to convert one vegan back to meat at all. Right. Um, it's it's good it, to have that clarity. Yeah. It is, it's, I'm not trying to say, hey, vegans, why is this? You will never eat vegan again. And you're going to go right back to meat. No, I'm not here to try to change anyone. I'm here to just say, hey, here's the information. Here's the truth. You go make your own decision. I don't care if you're vegan, if you're already a meat eater, if you're a health nut who thinks that, oh, wait, less meat is better. Right. Or if you're a health nut who thinks that, hey, meat is good, but this might be a better version of meat. That's the guy and woman that I'm looking for. Th those are the people that need to watch this. I'm interested in my own well-being. That's who I want. I'm not trying to convert one vegan back to, to eating meat. Because they do that on their own. 87, 87%, if you look at the statistics, come back on their own. That would be a stupid movie to make. I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking to 13% of the people. No, they're going to make that decision all by themselves. They're going to figure out this is the dumbest thing I've ever done. Let me go back and eat meat. The reason veganism, and by the way, it's a very, very tiny part of the population that are vegans because they have to keep finding new people because 13 year old girls eventually become 16 year old girls and go fuck that. Right. And that's basically who become vegan. Look around, look around. It, well, hold, 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 but here's the thing, right? Go Even on. though it's a tiny percent of the population that are actually currently at this moment, if we took a snapshot eating vegan, right? Right. There, what I'm more concerned about, are the people who either call themselves plant-based, which is the flexitarian sort of language that means I mostly eat vegan, but I'll eat meat when the craving's so bad I can't stand it. Or the rest of the population that does eat meat, but somehow has taken on this collective unconscious societal guilt about it. Those are the people I feel like I really want you to reach because I want them to have the information. I, I, I think you don't feel guilty for eating meat and let's instead look for more reasonable solutions of supporting local ranchers and making this, I mean, making the ruminant population come back to the way it's supposed to be doing right. what it's supposed to do to farm land. Well, look, I think you and I can both agree <clears throat> that we're not fans of factory farming uh, of, 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 you know, absolutely not. And we agree with the vegans right. on that. Yeah. And, but this, you know, if you're feeling guilty about eating meat for that reason, well, there are ways to get meat without doing that. It's more expensive, but there are ways to get it. Um, also, if you feel guilty because you think you're you're harming the ozone layer or you're putting CO2 carbons um, uh, into the atmosphere, again, you know, this movie will prove to you that what you've been told was a lie 
a complete lie, and that wasn't the truth. Um, I am not a climate denier. I will be the first to say that, yeah, the, the polar ice caps are melting. We, you know, the, the planet is warming up. We're having a problem. We've seen shift in weather and everything else. Okay, that's real. The part that's not real is that ruminants are not causing the problem, not even a little bit, not at all. What's causing the problem is us. We drive cars, we have blowers, meaning you know, you know two-stroke engines, we have all of this stuff. We, we, this, this iPhone that everyone uses is causing CO2 in the atmosphere because you know, Jesus Christ, Vin, it's electric. It's a, uh, it, it's a solid. They manufacture it. Where's that electric coming from? Either coal or diesel. Bottom line. Yep. And until you guys decide that uh, nuclear is not bad, right. you start with your fucking no nukes thing, okay? That's not going to throw CO2 into the atmosphere. Not like this. Not like this phone. So if you guys are worried about the atmosphere, on day one, stop being guilty about a goddamn cow or eating a lamb or eating a pig or eating chicken or eating an egg or dairy and get rid of your freaking phone and go back to a landline that's a lot cheaper. Guess what? I lived most of my life without having information at my fingertips unless I went to a library. That was the only place where you can have information at your fingertips. Why do I know that? Because Marie Tata Rich was a librarian. And I read a lot. And I learned a lot in the library. I've learned almost nothing from this. You know what I get from a cell phone? You want to know what I get, Anna? I get ridiculed every day. Every day I go and I look at it and someone tells me I'm killing the planet, <laughs> I'm killing Bambi, and I'm killing everybody. That's true. Planet. That's true. The so, phone is a source of anxiety. Where everybody can so, tell you you're being an idiot and you're like hey i'm trying oh, to do you, nice you things I did 10 minutes on that it's like you know whenever you're out there and you're outspoken and you're talking about something you got nothing but people telling you you're you're the most horrible human being on the planet <laughs> i'm a lightning rod so that's all this has ever done for me right and guess what and do you have to charge your phone during the day at all do you have to charge it up yes my phone's a piece of shit. Okay, let's say I wasn't. Mine is not a piece of shit. Mine I can go NS and it's basically bricked itself. Okay, I can go all day. All day on a charge at the end of the day, I still have 20, 30%, 40%. Right. And, but what I'm saying is, it's because I'm not on the phone all day. I'm not there clicking and clicking and clicking. I do my tweets in the morning. I do my tweets at night. Yeah. Period. If, if Coddington calls, I'll pick it up. I'll talk to him. Yeah. I'm. Uh, um, wasting your life and you're wasting I call you pick it up maybe mm. maybe you're if so I got crazy. nothing else going on holidays Vin be be charitable and answer my calls I do your clubhouse I do Anna's stupid clubhouse folks you should do Anna's stupid clubhouse every Monday night mm -hmm. by the way Anna when am I doing your clubhouse again can I, I do it do this that? Monday I, I hate to badger you on air but I would love for you to do it because you should talk about the movie you want to do it yeah, um, after the show, remind me to put it in my okay. schedule. And it's late enough that I can do it, right? It's 8 right? p.m. Eastern on Mondays. Yeah, I could probably. Uh, I might, or we could schedule another time. No, no, I'll try to stick to that. Remind, uh, send me a text or I something. Will. I'll do that. Okay. Folks, speaking of Anna Vocino um, and Christmas time, she's got a lot of stuff out there. This woman is very, very busy. She's got a book. It's called Eat Happy. She's got another book. It's called Eat Happy 2. She spelled it wrong. She puts T-O-O. It's because she went to Emory and they don't know anything at Emory. What a dummy. She's so I smart. majored in French, not English. Sorry. And it shows. And um, she, also, she also has some gravy over there. She's got the puttanesca. She's got the marinara. And she's got the crema, the pink crema. And if you're me, you still have one of her pumpkin marineras. I don't know. That's not available for sale anymore. You're going to. No, it's it. not, folks. I'm, I'm kind of doing an ad here for Anna. Thank you. But uh, you can't even get it. If you guys got yourself maybe, I don't know, 320s hanging around, I might part with mine. But it ain't going for people to fix me, I can tell you that. That's right. But go check out everything Anna Vecino has over at Eat Happy Kitchen and also um, AnnaVecino.com.
The woman is giving away a lot of free stuff. You might I as think, well go grab it. Yeah, today, Monday, uh, today or tomorrow will be the last day to guarantee Christmas delivery for sauce. By the way, my friend Jeannie bought a case of sauce and then she bought all these really cute little kitchen towels and she wrapped up the to- the sauces with the towels and she's giving, because she's trying not to use any wrapping paper and stuff like that. So she's like, here. And she's giving them out as presents to her friends. And I was like, that's so smart. I love that. And also it supports the cause. So- Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Vinny. Um, I'm scheduling you in the clubhouse right now. And also, too, I got a new eggnog recipe out. No sugar, baby. You don't need it. And you know what eggnog is, Vinny? What is it? Is egg and is not? Egg yolks. It's a lot of egg yolks. I love egg yolks. And a lot of heavy cream. I love me some heavy cream. And then you boil it into a custard. Yeah. And then you, you cool it off and you strain it. And then you put alcohol in it. You damn right you do. Damn right you do. It's basically it's basically as drinkable pudding. And when was the last time you had an actual custard? Um, see, I make a number of different kinds of custards for various recipes. Right. But I have not ordered a custard in a restaurant in probably decades. I don't think I've had a custard. Like a boiled that, custard? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, like like a, 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 a like, like a pudding. A pudding. Um, yeah. I, I haven't had real custard since Italy, two thousand and eight. Mm. You, That's you a might long need a custard. Time. Yeah, but you know, it's one of those life into living things you do. You know, you happen to be in Rome, you know, and yeah. they they got the frozen custard. Yeah, you but do. I'm saying you could make the custard without any sugar. Anna, can you send me a, a special Vinny custard recipe? You, what do you want? Sugar? You want chocolate custard? No, I want custard the way God intended it with the vanilla. You want vanilla? Do you want a, like a panna cotta or do you want yeah, like a, no, a regular? Because I, I have a panna cotta recipe I can send you. That's no, I want, uh, yeah, you know, I like the panna cotta. That uses gelatin to set it up, whereas like a creme brulee. Wait, wait. Marie says I've never had a gelatin in my life. <laughs> no, congealed salad. Oh, my God. <laughs> Katie Applegate Schmapsy posted a, a link. She added me to this group called Disgusting Vintage Recipes. And this recipe... <laughs> <laughs> was a congealed salad called a taste of Italy. Okay. Number one, oh God, really? it was Knox gelatin with a bottle of wishbone Italian oh, black canned olives. That's not real. Canned pimentos, canned tuna and celery. That's not real. Anna, a taste of Italy. No, that, that's a and, t- it, and, and the picture was this horrible, like, 60s when they first started coloring pictures you know what i mean where they only had three colors of ink that they had to like gradiate we've both, we've both been to italy a lot have you ever tasted anything that sounds like that no anywhere? this is an americanized abomination of absolute like somebody was just like what do i have left of the pantry well i don't know it has olives let's call it a taste of italy <laughs> wait anna I- i'm gonna do some producing on the show uh, on the fly here. What's the date of the clubhouse that I'm doing? It's tonight, right? When this comes out? Tonight, when this comes out, December right. hold on, 13th All right. at 8 uh, p.m. Uh, people can hear you, but I'm walking away from my mic because if I don't write it down, I, I won't do I'm, it. Oh, okay. I was going to text you, but that's okay. Good. Go walk away from your mic and write it down. And uh, yes, the congealed salad that I just described can be found in a Facebook group called Vi- Disgusting Vintage Recipes. And hey, 8 o'clock, Anna? Eight o'clock Eastern. And I'm going to call it Beyond Impossible with Vinny. Let's talk about the movie. Right, and, uh, and that's on the 13th, right? Clubhouse. On the December 13th. Okay. Putting it in. I'm scheduling it. Boom. I'll I'm saying, it. come here, Vinny Tortorich. Discuss his new movie n- new documentary documentary beyond impossible now the other thing is the eggnog i want to tell people and then they can ask you questions after you talk about it right because people like to ask you questions yeah 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 yeah. Well, yeah q a afterwards yeah uh, wait, wait. What, what, what am what am i agreeing to you're going to talk about the movie you and i are going to talk about the movie on clubhouse ask me questions yeah. and then it, open oh, it to a q a yeah as long as I can have scotch. Yeah. In yeah. fact, I might have alcohol too. Boom. I'm having Ooh. alcohol. I'm having alcohol tonight. It's a Thursday night. Yeah. Because normally I have it on Friday and I'm not having alcohol tomorrow night. I'm having it tonight instead because my buddy Dave Dolak, 
uh, Dave the Kayaker, mm -hmm. he started his own race kayak company where he's building these race Ooh. kayaks. He bought the the rights to West Side Boats, and he's got all of you know all of the farms to make those boats, and he's making those kayaks now. And he he set up his company a couple of months ago. He's pulled everything together, and he's got his first sale. And I said, hey, that sounds like time to celebrate. Come yeah. on over. Yep. He's he's so coming. Dave Locks on his way. Yeah, Dave is coming tonight, and uh, we're gonna have a Scotch Rooney. Uh, me and Dave. What kind of scotch are you going to have? Uh, whatever I have over here. Let's see. Uh, you should put it into an eggnog. All right. I'm so kidding. Me, I wouldn't wait, bastardize wait, your nice scotch wait, with eggnog. No, hang, on, hang on. I do have Maker's Mark. Uh, tell me how to make your eggnog. Oh, okay. Well, the recipe's at anavacino.substack.com, Vinny. Okay, but I'm, I'm not going to go to anything called anavacino.substack. I'll send you the recipe. Vinny. I'll uh, send you the recipe. Have Serena make it for you. All right, but just tell me right now what it is, because no, give me an idea of what's in it. How do you egg yolks? Egg yolks. Okay, that's not heavy cream. Easy. You heavy have to make cream. a custard. I'm telling you, you're not going to make this. Serena's going to make it for you. I'll send Why it. Why can't her. I make it? I'm not stupid. I can't make it. No, you, you're yeah, not, stupid. not stupid. You're okay. impatient. I made three documentaries and wrote two books. How impatient? Yeah, but you impatient. won't. You won't do the heat low enough so the eggs don't cook. You're gonna. I'm telling you. I know you, you don't have the patience. You're going to, you're not going to whisk in time and it's going to scald. And then you're going to write me. You're going to be pissed at me. Oh boy. All right. So I'll get Serena to do this. Um, and you put the cinnamon, you could put the nutmeg, the allspice, whatever those things that you like that are festive, yeah. but you got to let it cool. You're not going to make it by tonight. That's the thing. How long does it have to cool? A couple. Well, it's got to cool enough. And then you strain it through the strainers to get any of the bits out. And then you pour that maker's mark right in there or dark wait, rum, it's but gonna I like be, wait, it's going to be for bourbon. 4 15 when we're done with this show, probably. Yeah. And Dave's not coming over until 8 30. Okay. I can't make it and have it cool by then. You could hold on, hold on. Let's say I started this project at four. Let's see at four 30, my time. Right. Okay, Dave's okay. coming over four hours after that, eight thirty, because he's got some church event to go to. Um, okay, a cup of heavy cream, a cup of whole milk, four egg yolks, ground cinnamon. Huh? I got all that stuff. Cinnamon. I know you do. Ground cinnamon, nutmeg. Uh, do you have the vanilla extract without any sugar in it? Of course we do. OK, so you're going to basically make that uh, you're going to scald the milk, right? And you're going to whisk the egg yolks a long time by themselves in a bowl. You have to whisk them like till they get light and fluffy, those egg yolks. Okay. Now, when you're making a traditional eggnog, that's the point where you put the sugar in with the egg, no egg yolks. But we're not doing sugar. We're not doing sugar substitutes. We're not doing any of that. We don't need it. Okay. I promise you guys, you don't need it. When you whisk sugar with egg yolks, it gets light and fluff fluffy pretty quickly. Right. But if you don't add the sugar to the egg yolks and you're just whisking the egg yolks, you've got to wait for you got to do it for a little while. You got to beat those yolks. OK, yeah. But they will start to get lighter in color in yellow and get a little fluffy. Now, what you do, I can do that. I got a whisk and everything. And I know it, it, it kind of gets your aggressions out. Let me ask a question. Can I use okay. the, you know, the absolutely the, you absolutely can the mixing thing. Yep. Tell I'm just old school and I whisk. You know, I, I got the you whip. I'm at the immersion blender. Yeah, you just, you know, it's got the two. Are you talking about the double, double whisk? Yeah, thing? I got the two blades. Okay, yeah. that is a hand mixer. Yes, you can use a hand mixer. And absolutely. I have the whisking wire things that you could put on there. Yep. Yeah. You can absolutely do that or do an immersion blender. So I'm thinking because it takes longer and I'm under the, the wire here, I need to do it this way. You should. Mm. Um, yep. So do the hand, right. hand mixer, get it light and fluffy, mm -hmm. take the, the cream and the milk off of the heat. Don't let it burn and get the film on it. If it does get a film, get that film out of there. I, I, you know, what? I'm not letting Serena do this. I'm doing it. So, OK, while I'm with and you guys, please go to the sub stack and support. But I'll just go ahead and walk you through the recipe. All right. Okay? While I'm with, all right, yeah. All right, and this is a basic. This is how you make any custard, by the way. OK, if you want a thicker custard, add more egg yolks. Or if you, you want a thinner it. custard, like for eggnog, you do it with this, these proportions that are on the recipe. Four yolks, but while I'm whisking that, you're I, heating up the milk and cream. One cup of cream, one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and one cup of milk. So basically, two cups of half and half. 
but I don't like store bought half and half. I make my own. Uh, when no, I no, I, I'll do the milk. Serena buys milk because she does tea every day. Perfect. She throws a drop Get whole milk there. because regular half and half. I don't think uses whole milk. That's my theory. I think reg like store bought half and half is too thin. So I make my own with the super heavy cream and then whole milk. So it's like a thicker half and half. Right, now explain to me, I'm heating those up together. I'm not boiling yeah. them, but I'm making them very you're, hot. You're almost boiling. Like when it starts to boil, it's probably hot enough. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm stirring and I'm keeping that going. Yes. Okay. Now you're whisking that or using the wooden spoon. Now I got my, I and got if it my, gets, if it scalds and makes the film or gathers around that thing, you're going to have to get that out of there. Although we will don't make it, it scoop it out. I, I if you can. Yeah. OK, but if you heat it slowly, it shouldn't do that. If you if you crank the heat up and slap it on there, it will do that. No, no. I, I got one of those induction stoves. I can really you know, I can really you finesse it. Time. Yeah, yeah. I know what I'm yeah, doing. I have a double commercial grade gas stove and it goes. So no, no, really I careful. could do the thing because I like making my eggs slowly in the morning. Like mm -hmm. I don't just throw them on heat and fry them up. I like to slow cook them and just let them mm. cook up from the bottom. All right. So I so, beat I beat the four yolks into submission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I put I, I, I make this. And by the way, if you add an extra yolk or whatever, it's fine. And I, I'm already ahead of you. I was going to do five or six. OK, that's fine. But make sure you separate your eggs out well. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah, you're, you're yeah. used to separating eggs because you that's how you make your omelets. I'm going to save the whites and have them along with my omelet tomorrow morning. Great. So. When you get the, the, the half and half mixture mm -hmm. hot, you're going to take a little bit of it and like literally like maybe a, a tablespoon and drip it into your eggs and you're going to whisk your egg yolks, right? So okay. this is called tempering your eggs. If you were to take those egg yolks and dump them right into the it hot would, scalding it milk, poach. it would poach those egg yolks. You don't want that. So the, the key is for a smooth custard is to temper your eggs. Got so you it. take a little bit of that milk at a time and you whisk it in till eventually you notice it's tempered and then you can kind of, dump. but just do like a quarter cup at a time, drizzle it in while you're whisking. Mm -hmm. And this is where it, it requires the attention. And then there's another part that requires a little bit of attention. But once you get past that and you can tell if it's, if you, you might scramble a couple of things and that's okay. Cause you're going to strain it later. Just no, know that that's I, I'm not worried about it. I, I, I got the spoon. I'll get I'll mix it in. But how you got to keep doing that with every spoon or is there some point where you can mix it all in? Uh, when, when you feel like it's OK, the eggs are hot when it's tempered, when basically when your egg milk mixture starts to get steamy, you know that it's hot enough now and it's not going to cook if you dump the rest of it in there. OK, good. You know what I'm saying? Time you put that you, you mix that in. I'll tempering your eggs. Temper. I'm going to temper my eggs. And this is the base of a custard because a custard is just egg and cream. But you have to do it this way so that you don't cook the egg. And instead, we're going to cook it a different way. Slow. We're going to slow cook it. So now you have a bowl full of this egg milk mixture, right? Right. You pour that back into your saucepan. Turn that heat back on nice and slow. And you're going to bring it to a low boil and you're going to use the wooden spoon and you're going to stir it. And it takes little, it doesn't work at all. And then all of a sudden at like minute eight or nine, it works. It's the weirdest thing. So easy boil and mm -hmm. just keep stirring. And In fact, I bring it to a boil and I turn it down. Okay. Because I, I don't think it should be constantly boiling. All right. So just keep heat on it, keep stirring. And then That's some right. magic happens after about eight or nine minutes. Mm-hmm. OK, and then you just have your still have your egg and cream. And so when, for example, when you lift, I don't, have, I don't know why I'm like looking at my desk like I have a wooden spoon sitting here. Why do I not have a wooden spoon next to me at all times? You're Italian. You, you're doing that. Yeah, looking for it. Yeah, yeah. So you lift the wooden spoon out. And if you were to swipe your finger across the back of it, mm -hmm. it makes a, it makes a track. You OK, know what I'm yeah. So and it's creamy. It's, it's if it like, doesn't make the track, it's not ready yet. Keep going. Got it. OK, that's, that's how, you know, right, by the way, one. all good cooking instructions should not should not just have a time. It needs to give visual cues and sometimes physical cues or temperature. Cue. You need to know what it looks like. Because everybody has a different stove. Everybody's on a different altitude. Everybody things cook right. differently. Right. So you swipe your finger across the back of that thing. If it's got a track that doesn't immediately fill back in, mm -hmm. you're, you're probably good to go. All right. So in once eight to back 10 minutes. In saucepan. Now you're going to take it. You're going to pour it into a fresh bowl through a strainer. 
to get back, get out any of those eggy bits that may have cooked. Okay. Incorrectly discard those. And you, and you uh, whisk in your, your vanilla extract, two teaspoons, your, whatever your uh, cinnamon. Quite, and question, Anna. Mm -hmm. I have um, real vanilla. Great. Can you I, can, can scrape shave, in the pods. Yep. In there. Okay. Absolutely. I would start with I, one I, pod. I do, okay. One pod. I would start with one pod uh, and taste that. And that might, that's probably going to be enough. Yeah. I got some really good. Real if it's really vanilla. strong. I, I'm big on real stuff. Here's the thing with vanilla, vanilla, especially the real good stuff mm -hmm. takes the place of needing to have any sugar or sweetener. It kind of marries everything together, especially oh, when you I, add I, that. I, I put vanilla sometimes when I'm whipping cream to put on my yeah. coffee. When it's really nice. They go, oh my God, I thought you were the no sugar, no grains guy. It's like, there's no sugar, there's no sugar in there. There's, there's no sugar whatsoever. And they're like, you're kidding me. It's like, your coffee is the best. It's like, yeah, my coffee is pretty good, but you could do this with any coffee. It's so good. And, and make it taste like a real dessert. P people think I'm insane when it's like, wow. But yeah, you got to do real vanilla. I do the real vanilla. Yeah. I mean, you can do nice vanilla extract. Not because sometimes people can't find the, the Madagascar we have bean. That that's we okay. have that hanging around too. Yeah, you just you know, have it. Yeah, we have one of the it. things that should be in everybody's pantry. As a matter of fact, that whenever I'm doing the whipped cream, I, I do it with the, you know, the extract. Whisk it all in because especially the vanilla beans and the powdered uh, spices, they're kind of difficult to whisk in. If you want to do the hand mixer again, you could do that. This is going to be have a bowl. It's about two and a half cups, maybe the two, I'm sorry, two cups ish. Okay. But so in a glass bowl, you this is where you're going to need to cover it with the with the saran wrap. Mm -hmm. But instead of covering the bowl, you're literally going to put the surface of the plastic wrap on the thing, because if you don't, it settles up like a pudding with a big, thick film on it. You don't want that. The well, plastic I, well, I don't understand what you're saying. What do I have? Well, imagine. Imagine this is a I'm holding a bowl of pudding, right? OK, I'm telling you, I want that saran wrap to touch the surface of the pudding. Before you put it in the fridge. So usually you would put a, a, a foil or a saran wrap over a bowl and you do it taut so it would be flat across. Right. I'm talking about you take the saran wrap and it, and it goes into the bowl, touches the surface of the eggnog and then comes back up. Oh, really? It, yes. Why That's what keeps it from making that pudding film, that custard film. OK, I, I'll just right? have to agree that that's going to happen. Just been, um, if you don't want if you don't use plastic in your house, you could just do it with a clean kitchen rag. Question here, uh, Serena, other Serena, Anna, <laughs> other Serena. Um, do I have to let it cool to room temperature before I put it in the fridge or I'm putting I don't I just put it in the fridge. fridge. I don't think anything's going to happen to it. It cools off when you're straining it. It actually cools pretty well. Right. And uh, put the thing on and and you you could. But if, if you let it sit out without the topping on it, the saran right. wrap on top, right. it will start to form film. Of I'm ex I'm excited about this. I'm not sure we have saran wrap. Oh, you can just do a clean uh, kitchen rag and then just know that when you take it out, it's, you know, rinse it and throw it in the wash. OK, you can do that. I can't use tinfoil. No, no tinfoil. I right. bet you have plastic wrap hidden somewhere. Oh, you could use I'm, I'm parchment use paper, it. but that might be difficult. I have part. I, I've seen the parchment paper around here. Um, I you will, can do parchment paper, but it might you know be more. I'll, I'll, just do a out. Tea, I'll do a tea towel, but it's got to touch tea it. Towel. Yeah, do a tea towel. It has to touch it. So yeah. the thing is with eggnog, so now you haven't even put the liquor in yet. I add liquor, you broader. I start, liquor, you broader. I start with a quarter cup of whatever it is. I did a bullet bourbon okay so what i'm hearing the other day two cups you're gonna do <laughs> you're gonna do an equal one for one custard to bourbon ratio isn't that how you do it i start with a quarter cup okay. and then taste it the thing is about with these with the eggnog is that you could because it's about once you put the liquor in or don't put the liquor in you have enough where you can make individual servings say what do you want you want the you want right. the bourbon you want the thing right. And not Dave Dolak, but if you have the neighbors come over and they want it sweet, you could add some maple syrup for them that well, you wouldn't do for yourself. Next door, and uh, you know the, and they, they or know leave that, it without that. alcohol for the kids. No, they all know that Uncle Vinny just don't do sugar, and they get the biggest kick out of that for whatever reason. They go, "You never have to." I was like, "No, 
because I'll make them popcorn when they come from movie night. Right. The popcorn. Um, and then you um, don't eat it. And they're like, what's wrong with you? Like, he doesn't eat. You can smell the butter. I'm going to be honest. I'll sneak. You're like, I'll eat the butter. While I'm making it, I taste one or two to make sure that there's enough salt. Oh, that's good. That's very big of yeah. you. It's for the kids. Know. It's for the kids. There's so much butter in mine. It's, it's almost keto. I'm sure there is. Those kids don't even know how they're having Kerrygold on their popcorn. They don't right. even know. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, you, I told you what happened, right? Um, I said to him, um, I, I made popcorn. They were like, we've never had popcorn like this in our lives. I was like, yeah, I what are you talking about? It was like, no, we, we, we just get the bags of popcorn. It's like your mom just brings home like smart food popcorn. They were like, no, you know, you put the bag in a microwave. They didn't even know that popcorn can just be made on. Oh, like a, on a stove. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, no, if Uncle Vinny's going to make you popcorn to be real, I'm, it's going to have real butter It's going to have the best salt in the world. It's going to have it all. And that's, that's just amazing. Where I yeah. And it's the only grain that comes into the house is popcorn that's for the neighbor's kids, because I want them to feel the experience of watching the movie. And, and um, you know, they, they should enjoy that treat. That's what it's made for. It's not made to eat carbs all day, every day. Um, I agree. I think that's really nice. And I like hearing that you do that because I think yeah. the more we can get back to just making real food snacks for the kids. Oh, and also do, they get to, they, they learn those skills because then they're going to go off to college and go off to the world and make their own homemade too. And it's nice. It's a good, it's good to keep the tradition going. And by the way, their mom is, is a great mom. I mean, they make food from scratch. They do, you know, she, she's cooking all day long, but I guess when she, Figures, oh, popcorn, you just throw it in the microwave. You know, like it's one of those conveniences right. that people do, you know. Um, and uh, all I remember is that story that was in the news about the guy who ate microwave popcorn all the time and he got some weird lung disease because he opened the microwave popcorn and always liked to inhale it. <laughs> I was like, I can't. After that, I never had microwave popcorn ever again. I don't think I've had popcorn in a long you know, time. You deserve a weird lung disease. If that, if, if that's that, what I'm saying. Yeah. I was like, oh, that sounds terrible. What do they put in there? I don't want to eat that. So yeah. d so does that help with the eggnog? And you see how it's customizable. If you want to do a little cup or if you want to reheat it and have it hot, you can do that. But it will. I'm, I'm, it, I'm starting it cools, to think it will. It will get thicker and nice and eggnoggy. And I'm thinking a cinnamon stick in there and garnish it. If I like it. I'm going to do uh, a second one tomorrow okay. and just make yeah. custard, just make custard. Okay. Well, so do that and increase your egg yolks. By, by how many? Double. I was going to say do eight. How thick do you want this custard? You want it to want your spoon it, to stand I up in it, it? Yeah. I want it thick. I want it like the Italian custard. What would happen if you did 12 egg yolks and, and two cups of the half and half? I think it would be amazing. So 12 egg yolks, two cups of half and half and one cup of milk. No, no, no. The milk out. 12 egg yolks for one cup of milk and one cup of heavy cream. So that's what, two cups of half and half. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right. So you would put that many 12. Why I'm not? a I, I go into beast mode. So oh, and I think, listen, I think if I'm wrong, what's the worst that can happen? Out. You'll have like a, a, a it'll be too eggy tasting. You just and then in that case, you taste it as you're cooking it and you can add more vanilla to kind of cover that flavor if that happens. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to mess around with it, but I, you, you just got me a little wet. I think I'm in love with you. But to me, the eggy taste comes in when you don't separate your egg yolks well, because egg yolks to me don't taste eggy. Right. No, it, it, it's the, the album and from the um, yeah. from the whites. Um, oh, so there there's the there's the. 20 minute long description that took oh, Anna, the, look, the time this, that you guys are listening to this. You could have made the eggnog. So get in the kitchen and make it. I, I'm going to make this. And folks, if you guys want, you got to go to Anna Vicino stack mail. Anna Vicino dot I'm going to put what, what next week is sausage mean, cheddar what balls. Is, what is sub stack? What is that? So a sub, we, you and I were supposed to talk about this because I think you should do a sub stack too. So sub stack is a, and folks, it's a newsletter platform. All right. And what happens is, you know how you import your email addresses into a program and then they charge you basically the, the lease of a car every month to have those sitting there? Yeah, pretty much. And to be able to email people? Yeah. Substack doesn't charge you that at all, number one. Okay. Number two, Substack 
gets through the Google spam filters because people who subscribe to a Substack actually want to really hear. It's not like a marketing spam email. You're sending content. Oh, to that's what you were telling me because some of my stuff probably gets caught in people's. Yeah. Oh, right. a lot of, a lot of stuff can get in there. And you're like, I'm trying to get information to people. And finally the last straw for me, cause I, I was like, I was toying with doing it. And then having, what I want to do is I want to do exclusive recipes and I will do a paywall starting in January. I'll do, still have some stuff for free and then I'll have some stuff at the paywall. But why I was doing it, the, the straw that broke the camel's back was when the pumpkin marinara sold out. And by the way, I only made enough to cover the pre-orders. And I felt like I told everybody a million times that. And then I got angry emails like, I didn't even know you're doing this. I never saw the posts. And I was like, really? And so that's why I was like, I want one place where the people can go and get the information because I'm tired of algorithms cock blocking. Does, does Scott know about of spam folders? I don't know. I wanted to tell you about it because I think that you should do it because I think it's you like to write and you like to tell stories. And it's another way to, for you to really engage with super fans. All right, I need to get it out to all my my peeps. You know, I want them all to buy the movie. So uh, maybe yeah. I'll substack it or something. Yeah. Do a, a Vinnie Tortorich dot substack. Can you explain it to Serena. Yeah, I'm happy to. Someone needs to explain the stuff. And to by me. the way, you can now embed podcast episodes from your Libsyn feed. So if you if you feel like people aren't engaging or listening to the podcast enough, if there's one that you think is a great episode, you really want your people to hear it like this one, this like episode. This because one. We, Hello, uh, Anna, I'm a, I can't wait to get in the kitchen because I have about an hour. Oh, it's time. And, and I, I'm going to get in an hour before I have to do another podcast. So if have your phone next to you in case I get. Yeah, stuck. call me. I'm here. I'm yeah. going to be working. You know what? I'm going to try not to call you, but. It just it's have okay. your phone there in case I get stuck. It's fine. I'm I'm sitting and working today. I want you to um, well, let's save let's save the really disturbing New York Times article about coronavirus <laughs> for next time yeah. when it's closer to the holidays. Let's yeah. save it for when we're feeling more festive, shall we? Ruin everyone's. Yeah, and you know we got to do our Christmas show. We got to do a New Year <gasps> show. Wait, that our Christmas show maybe should be next. Wait, hold on. If this is the thirteenth, our Christmas show should be the twentieth, right? Should we do it? Wait, what day is Christmas? Is it Friday? Third, this is coming out the 13th. The Christmas okay. show is going to be the 20th. So the next one we record is going to be our Christmas show. Okay, what is Friday? And the one after what? that's New Year's, the 27th. And then the one after that is, guess what? M Manic Monday. We have to come up with a name for that first Monday after New Year's where our numbers explode, where everybody comes back. Ha have, are people avoiding you yet, by the way? People are avoiding me. No, no one's avoided. They're, they're avoiding it in the month of December. I get avoided because somehow I'm the reflection of, of people going off their plans. And I'm like, I don't care. It's the I have people. I have Enjoy. people. You know, I'm getting a lot of bless me, Vinny, for I have send yes. you know, phone calls. <laughs> you know, um, Anna, is, is Christmas actually on Friday? Christmas is. Saturday, December 25th. Okay, so um, because I was going to say you and I should do. You do a Christmas Eve show on Friday, the 24th. Yeah, should we should we just do a regular Monday show and then do a Christmas Eve show? Sure. I think we should. And then so we, we can do our depressing health and fitness. Uh, make you want to slit your wrist. Normal content for Monday, the 20th. Monday, and then we could do our. <laughs> then we'll get a little festive. Christmas. No, we do 12 yeah. days of Christmas every year and yeah. I'm going to do the adding up and the whole thing. It's a tradition. You're going to make me do math again. Yeah. It's just have your pencil ready. And then on New Year's Eve. We'll, but Anna, you, yeah. here's the thing. We got to get those shows in the can because. Yeah, because you're leaving, right? Yeah. Are you going to Europe? Yeah. Can't believe that. See, Are we went gonna... to New York and I was so glad to do it and get it done and now not have to travel. Oh, by the way, if anyone's uh, considering coming over to my house and robbing us during that time, <laughs> please feel free because I have two on duty cops staying at my house and my next door neighbor is one of the chiefs of police for the area. So, yes, you will see cop cars in front of my house more than the, the usual one. You will see two in front of my house. So please come over. I, I beg of you, if you guys want to rob me, Christmas time is the time to do it. 
please come over because I've got off duty cops. There's your eggnog. I can't wait, Anna. I can't wait. Um, I'm not putting nothing by Megan. Got mind. that Vishla puppy that I sent you. Yeah, that was way too cute. She makes me crazy. You want one? Oh, Izzy's gone so one? blind. She fell in the pool. Luckily, I was right there. Anna, look, our pool it, cover's broken. So now I just got to be out there with her because Anna, listen, Howie Mandel's dog died that way. I know. I'm now I'm hearing all these horror stories. I'm, yeah, it yeah. was 445 in the morning. So I was already standing at the door. But then I was in my tank top and my underwear that I sleep in. And it was I would have <laughs> my love not to see that. Ugh. I am so glad we don't have. Were you able to scoop her out? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was. But I was just like, oh, and she, you know, she knows we trained her when she could see where the pool right. steps are. But because she hates swimming, but she's a good swimmer. But oh. she wouldn't she can't see anymore and, and she wouldn't please, see it in the dark anyway. Please, please, please get that pool cover fixed. We are. We you are. Know, yeah. You know, um, Oh, I, I, I was standing right there, but now I know to like literally because and I was watching her do it. I was like, Izzy, 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 which also proves that she's completely she's not deaf. trained because she didn't listen to me. Oh, oh, she's, or she's, she's deaf. An Italian female didn't listen to you. OK, hmm. uh, wonder what's going on there. You know what you should listen to when it comes to Italians? Villa Capelli olive oil, folks. Villa Capelli. Paul Capelli started a company with his boyfriend, which became his husband, Stephen Crutchfield. And they ran this company. Oh, look at that dog. Look at it. Her fur was like velvet. Oh, they're all like, even when they it's grow like up, butter velvet. Let me tell you something. I, I, I subscribe to Vishalas online. I, I watch Vishalas on, on. If someone says, what are you watching on Instagram? Vishalas. And hot chips. I, I think I have to get one. Anna, you know who hey, come to me. I know. I'll text I'll get you. you over to Auntie Bev and get you on the list. Um, um you yeah. know what Steven's been doing? He has his stories and he's doing new stories every day about like living love la, la vita dolta dolce. I don't know, living the sweet life is what yeah. it is in Italian. And and uh he he's having a good time, he's living his best life. I'm so happy, man. I'm so happy he, for he him. Lost, he lost his, the love of his life mm -hmm. and um, decided to keep that country company going and living in that country. He's still living there. It's, yes. And, and, and finally learning Italian. Yeah, By the way, it. there is a gift basket, uh, the Eat Happy collection there. And then there's an easy Italian collection. There's the delicious Italian. Get, get over there and get the stuff because I think that they're going to sell out for... Oh, yeah, that one sold out. They're going to sell out for for the holidays. Um, I just ordered myself a three liter tin. But here's what I did. A three liter tin of the best olive oil on the planet. You guys, the best. I yeah, also yeah. ordered the uh, powdered garlic. The sea salt and the lemon salt. Nice. And then I used the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, not with a wimpy Y. And I got 10 you do that, Anna? Oh, you got 10 oh, wow. I got 10 percent off. Unbelievable. You have to enter it when you go, like, go to checkout, right? Yeah. I don't know if you guys have heard of this thing called a promo code, but it's called Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E. You get 10% off your order every time, but it, it knocked it off enough where I got my 10% off, but I still got the free shipping. I wonder if I could oh, put no, promo code Vinny in for the barrels of oil I buy for my vitamin D. <laughs> just put in promo code Vinny and see yeah. what happens. Just put it in 10 times and you get it for free. Yeah. Just kidding. It doesn't work that way, guys. No, you got to go. That was a math joke. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, go check out Villa Capelli. Uh, Anna, you know, everyone can find you. They can find your books on Amazon. We talked about that earlier in the show. So go check out everything Anna's doing. Uh, if my eggnog comes out anywhere decent, I will post it somewhere. Yeah. I'm, tag going, it. I'm going right in right now to do this. Great. And uh, hopefully it shall turn out well. It's going to be delicious. And... Everybody needs to pre-order Beyond Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. And don't give me any shit about doing it on iTunes. Don't tell. I don't want to hear one single fucking word about, oh, I'm not giving Apple any money. Yes, you are. What because you're going to support Vinny. You're going to support Vinny. 
And you know what? Sometimes you got to throw a cookie in the cookie jar to play the game and support Vinny. OK, calm down, Anna. Let me ask you a question. Just pisses me off. I know it does. It does me too. Why? I see people on Twitter every day. They go, when's it going to be anywhere besides iTunes? Every day. Why? Why, why is that? What, what What do they have against iTunes and Apple? I don't get it. Tell me. I, I don't. I'm don't sure it. people have people have legit uh, legit beefs against all these companies, and I get it. But here's the thing: when you're launching something, you give out a very specific link for a reason. And you have to you guys have to trust that the powers that be who want this movie to grow need you to support the link that they send out in order for this thing to grow. Just trust me. Yeah, look, uh, Anna loves this movie. It's so Gina good. Grand that. loves this movie. Dr. Drew could not shut up about this movie. Corolla. Corolla was like, you know, I, I was like, I, I asked uh, Matt Fondelier, I said, uh, is he going to watch it? He goes, he watched the whole thing. He came in wow. talking about it. He came into usually Adam, when, when someone, you know, he's got to watch so many things and listen to so many albums and everything because people are in every day. He came in and told everyone, you guys have to see this. You have to see this. And then Gina told me the next day, she goes, you've now become a verb, an adverb. He uses your name for everything right now. <laughs> he can't get enough of this movie. He can't stop talking about this movie. Great. You know, um, he was talking about a combine. He called it Vinny's combine. He goes, you, you can't get on one of Vinny's combines without killing a fluffy rabbit or something. You know, it's like <laughs> people are telling me all this. It, it's like true. people, I've never had anyone so jacked up about a movie ever. Because uh, this movie is going to make some waves, my friend. What's the exact release date? January what? January 11th. Look, just with the one minute trailer. I'm scared to be associated with you. I know everyone this just with the one minute trailer, the vegans are going nuts going, this is propaganda. Who's paying this guy? He's getting paid by the beef. You're like, I wish I was getting paid by them. It's all my money that I put in. No one pays me. This is an independent documentary. I wanted to get in the vegans. truest sense of it. Yes. I wanted to get vegans involved in this documentary and couldn't. I couldn't do it. They, they, they didn't want to do it. So go check it out. Also, uh, before you go to Amazon, go to VinnyTartaries.com. It puts coal on the fire, gets my train down the track. We also have a super fan page at VinnyTartaries.com. So you can go check that out. Um, yeah. Anna Vocino mentioned her friend Jeannie at the beginning of the show. So we have a little song about. Let, let me little, just do a quick addendum. Go on. I'm, I'm now paranoid that I told you 12 egg yolks for two cups. Do yeah. 10. Do 10. Just start with eight, Anna, and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do 10. Okay. You know me. I'm going to go. You like it extra. You like it extra. Yeah, I want it. I want it creamy and good. Yeah. I'm doing both. Once I know that I can make the eggnog. Yeah. You, you're going to have you're going to have a skill. You can make any kind of custard. Now you could do this. And instead of putting in the vanilla, you could put in 100% cocoa powder and get a chocolate flavor. You could put in just the vanilla and not those spices and have a really vanilla -y, beany, delicious, you know what I'm saying? You could put in a little bit of lemon and have a little lemon vanilla. You could put in orange and have an, you know what I mean? There's all sorts of things you can do. I shall mess around with it, folks. Okay, okay on behalf of Anna Bocino, my name is Vinny Tartarich. Put life into living and let's do it with our friend, little Jeannie. <laughs>